And it happens at the front door. One of my great heroes in the ministry uh, who was ministering in the early 60s was a man, named, a man by the name of Sam Shoemaker who was the rector of Calvary Church in Pittsburgh. He wrote a great apology about his life, a poem. And the name of it is, I stand by the door. I neither go too far in with the mystics or go too far out with those who have secularized themselves. But I stand by the door to help those who are looking for the door of God and to help them find their way in. Sam Shoemaker also, by the way, was one of the founders of Alcoholics Anonymous. Won't surprise you that, um, that the stranger and not your buddy is the most important person uh, in the room. Um, now, I'm talking about being heart driven here and you say, well, Pat, why aren't you giving us more theory and less steps? You know, I was doing a Bible study this week on the Ascent Psalms. That's the Psalms 120 through 134 uh, that the people would sing on their way to Jerusalem. Um, and in the study, I was reading the work of Paul Scherer, who said, the Bible has very little time for feelings. The Bible spends very little time on feelings, which is true. It takes... It's more important to, um, to act and change your feelings than to feel and try to change your actions. And so when I talk to you about these very specific um, uh, steps that I would enjoin you to take, you will see in taking them that you will also have a heart change. That's what will happen. When we step out, when we step out is when our heart is changed. Paul Tillich would said that conversion is a movement of the whole self. We don't just kind of go, this is, this is really just dogs evan, evangelical Christianity of which I'm a part, but we often say, okay, in my head I believe Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Okay, big deal. It doesn't mean a thing until I step across the line and I make Him my Lord. And everything I do is directed by His Lordship in my life. Talk is cheap, isn't it? And so our work, our work of turning our, uh, uh, turning our, our feelings uh, uh, into uh, becoming a heart-driven church begins at the front door uh, with, the, with, the, with the person realizing that the person you don't know is the most important person that you will meet that day. Two times I've walked into parishes that have overwhelming uh, challenges. Just recently, when I came to St. Stephen's in Beaumont, we got caught up in the culture war. Our most moneyed families left, leaving us with $1,100,000 in debt and with a building we could not fill. <laughs> Furthermore, we owed the diocese $60,000 in our 2004 assessment. So my first trip to council, they told me I couldn't be seated. <laughs> Yeah, that's a warm welcome. <laughs> it's not unlike when I, walk, when I came to Beaumont, when Bishop Payne sent me to Beaumont some years ago, 200 families had left that parish. Um, and we had a hard time until we realized that of the 80 people who were left, The most important people were the 80 we didn't yet know. So I tell you this from experience, not from just some theoretical position. I have an alcoholic, uh, recovering alcoholic brother named Bill Hamilton, and he says, Pat, it's all about the fear. He says, you know, you, you don't drink because you just got to have alcohol. You drink because you're afraid, because you don't know who you'll be without the alcohol. And the same thing happens in our parishes. Um, we think, okay, what's going to happen? What's going to happen if we, end up, if we start being more welcoming, more gracious at the front door? Will, will people really like us if we extend ourselves? Will we really? It's kind of like, like an eighth grader asking the little girl to the sock hop. You know, will she, will she say yes? <laughs> and there's always risk there because she may say no, but most likely she'll say, she'll say yes. There's a lot of, there's a lot of fear. Uh, 
there's a lot of fear in the parish that I serve now. We can seat 360. We didn't think we would ever be able to fill it up. And once we started filling it up, we began to worry about, well, these people change us. Yes, <laughs> they will, but in a marvelous way. They will. We need not fear that, but it is always, and I know that in your own parishes, when you go back and you start trying to put in some of these, some, some of these, uh, uh, th these transformative practices, you're going to have people go, whoa, whoa, whoa. I actually worked with a very large parish uh, two years ago, and they said, Pat, if we did the things you, you prescribed, we'd have 15 or 16 people just walk out the door that day. And I thought, Lord have mercy, what is this place, a cult? Um, so you need not fear. As I said, the central tenet of the transformative congregation, the, the heart-driven congregation, is to take your eyes off yourself. Now there's no replacement for Sunday morning. If someone is going to come to church they're going to come on Sunday morning. Now, I know that there are some exceptions to that, and many of you have good side door ministries, and I, I applaud those, and I'll speak about that a little bit. But we know from hard um, investigative um, research that the vast majority of people are going to come on Sunday morning. So Sunday morning really is a Super Bowl. You've got to be ready on Sunday morning. It cannot be a practice. It's got to be game time. You've got to have your game face on. And so, you know, when you're thinking about that, I want you to think about the single mama who's kind of shaking her little girl into her tights, you know, little toddler. And she's combing the cow lick out of her little boy's hair. And she is going to take a risk. She's the one who's really taking the risk that she's going to step across the threshold to your church. I had a, we have a man in our congregation who's an international businessman. He's in Singapore every other week. He's in Austria. I mean, he's everywhere. He told me the other day, he said, Pat, you know, I'm completely comfortable in international airports, but the most uh, fearful thing I have done in years was step across the threshold of a church. It is scary business. So we got to be ready. Four of every five people who come to St. Stephen's in Wimberley have never been to an Episcopal church in their life. You can forget this idea of reshuffling Episcopalians. I was working with one of your parishes the other day and one of their fears was that they would be stealing parishioners from another. That, that doesn't do the kingdom of God a bit of good. Stay in your parishes. Make them better. 80% of the people in your communities never darken the door of a church. So if you go down the street and you ask someone to come to church, you have an 8 of 10 chance they haven't been through, past the door of a church or a synagogue or a mosque in 10 to 15 years. And if they say, oh, I go to First Baptist Church, you've got to go praise the Lord because at least they're going somewhere. Willow Creek, uh, North Barrington, Illinois says Sundays are for seekers and your midweek services are for your members. Now that's really hard for us to, to digest in the Episcopal Church, but Sundays really are for seekers. You, read, you look at the Gospels and it's clear, our job is to bring people to Jesus. That's our job. And if most people are going to come give us, a ch give us a chance on Sundays, so be it. You've got to be primarily focused on the seeker on Sundays. You don't have to disregard your, your, your membership, but you have to be ready for the seeker. And let me tell you this, you will become a better church. Once you start taking your eyes off yourselves, and you start reaching out to the person you don't know, your in-reach will be twice as good. It's, a, it's an interesting calculus in the kingdom of God. When you reach out, you reach back in so much more effectively. Give it a try. Sundays are not practiced. They're game time, as I said.